So believer, Mzalwani, do not look. You who are watching this video from the vantage point of the rapture having happened, do not look at how beleaguered on all sides you are and think, oh my God, you could have just protected me from meeting this guy. You could have just protected me from fellowshipping with this woman. Like, yo, I have had people slide into my DMs and after just five days, I have had people bewitch me, strangers. There's a chick that lived in my complex that I chatted with for five seconds in the clubhouse. And the next day, from That's how crazy South Africa is. They are like that ancient civilization in the movie Apocalypto. When I was working at MTN, I had a chick join the company. She was working there for just two weeks before she decided that my whole career must go. We became fast friends. And within two weeks of her starting a job at MTN, my whole career, two weeks, they are cockroaches. And nobody is going to escape, neither survive la marroches. But for those that are latching onto Jesus, violent men and women, do you understand? That are so incredibly diabolical that no one survives them. But for the one latching onto the creator of the universe that can overwhelm evil structures by the breath of his mouth. God is the one that can eliminate a roach species altogether just by one word uttered from his lips. So when you have got that level of beleaguerment around you, when there is a battalion of occult practitioners, they will bewitch you until you settle. How na mo toka mumbaleche lang den mudim? This guy from America was a murderer from the beginning like his father the devil. From the very get-go he was set apart to pursue me until he is done for. However, God gave me this grace about a year into his reign of terror. He showed me this guy putting a gun in his mouth and pulling the trigger. As a dubola, killing himself by Bullet. He opened his mouth and shot. I felt relief from getting that dream. I was like, finally, I was praying and fasting and praying and fasting. Just to get this tick, this cockroach, lensha off my skin, off my back. And eventually God gives me a dream a year and a half ago of him putting a bullet in his mouth. Gah. And I was like, finally, all talk afar. Finally, he's gonna kill himself. Finally, he's gonna be moved out the way by suicide. It's been a year and a half. And still to this day, I keep on getting dreams of his gray matter on the wall behind him. I'm like, God, you showed me a year and a half ago, Ugutilenja is Osbulala. Why is he still alive? I prophesied that Audrey Bulaya from suicide and if you don't repent. And it was precisely because I said you're gonna kill yourself that he was like, huh, let's see who's gonna kill who first. Let's see who's going to kill themselves first. Essentially me giving him prophecy that he's going to die by suicide made him determined to kill me by suicide. This guy just went on burning candles in his little voodoo shrine. And he has been pursuing me with death spells since. And then when his death spells fail, he then tries a love spell. He tried to take my beauty with a spell by making me age overnight. How not nto at this little nsha has not tried. And every time his spells fail, he then goes back to death spells. That's this guy. 
also in his attempt to kill me. Wame mage more of his ilk into my camp. By trying to kill me, he invited more people like him into my camp. Because of how much legroom and allowance God gave him to wreak havoc in my life, other men like him found me. And so now, it's not just one psychopath trying to kill me. I've got a few. Even my ex-boyfriend has joined that bandwagon. Some random tycoon from this country, from this country, keeps trying to kill me. Some Gen Z batong. There are so many death spells operating in one sitting against me. Some covenants in Kamahua have tried to kill me. They are struggling. All these people have determined to finish me off because this one guy was given allowance by God to block my ministry until other people who saw me, until other people who happened upon it, then made a determination to finish me off. After about a year of suffering under this freak, my YouTube channel started to grow. Again, I was gaining subscribers, I was good. I was, Im I was imagining that from this point, I am going to acquire what is called, what do you call this, monetization. Only for me to discover, Uguti no, the Lord never intended for me to monetize. That's not what he was doing. What the Lord was out here rather doing, was that he was creating a battalion of satanic soldiers to encircle me. More of this number one starting point from America. He brought more of them. There was no way more men were gonna look at me, Kakorobela, while I am still so beleaguered and shadow banned on all sides and blocked from anyone watching me. I had to garner for myself more people like this. More people like the guy in America had to be privy to my content. They had to be privy to my content from Facebook. They had to be privy to it from YouTube. And because I am sharing my story very transparently, exploitative messianic complex men and competitive women would then develop a beefy hatred against me. Women with a violent, voluptuous jealousy that would then make them determined to spite me by cursing everything that I say. So I gained subscribers and people who watched my content that were prolific Satanists trying to have a relationship with God, but like Saul, were discounted from long ago. So upon being frustrated with not being spoken to by the prophet Samuel, automatically went and visited the witch at Endor. People that God threw away because they went back to the mire, because they went back to the dirt after being washed. They went back to the vomit and now are trying to see if they can knock on heaven's door. And God is like, no, you don't get to crucify the son of man twice. So because of their bitterness, they keep on checking out Christian content, but I shut out of heaven. So what they do is make like Saul, since he wanted to listen, he wanted to get prophecy from Samuel because God was no longer speaking to him directly because God took his spirit away from him. These people then consult witch doctors instead of go to God. So because of their duplicity, how duplicitous they are with double standards, they look at a saint that never left home, a person that's not a prodigal, an individual that has been with Jesus this entire time. And they're like, Mizogens, I'm Mina. I'm gonna make you me. So I got women insisting to make me fornicate. I got men trying to slap me in Corobela. Men who came to my content because they were literally trying to be Christian, but could not quite hold on to God. And so they decided that they're gonna try Corobela because they just cannot they can't leave this witchcraft of theirs behind so they carry on with witchcraft while still professing christ as king they could not help but break out into the mumps and the lumps of bewitching a saint that they're subscribed to on youtube and whose videos they watch so god gave me a season of growing subscriber numbers and gaining viewers for myself.
for no other reason but to bring more cockroaches to my house so I could try and fumigate to no avail. And so for a second time again, inevitably, ones who could indeed pull in a favor with YouTube called in and said, shadow ban her, take away her advanced features, make sure nobody watches her. one of us. So here it is that now today, I am encircled, beleaguered by devil worshippers across all of this earth. High priests over Africa. Until I'm either married to one of them or dead. To a point where just this morning I wake up to hear from God a dream where one of them is saying, you're going to be single with Sean and Sha. Unless Uchata, me. Unless you marry me. How sad or joy. Yo, can it? Look at you being the wicked for the day of my trouble. These men have been presented me by God. And the Lord has said, Have you considered my servant Garab? And they have said, if only a YouTube channel. Not a single donation for months. Let no one help her. Then I'm gonna slide into a DMs and even though anyway, because they are telling themselves that there was even a spell that a lot of them did trying to get me or to apologize I imagine that trying to get me to apologize to them because of accusing them for witchcraft while they were innocent I didn't apologize I just kept on prophesying I just kept on speaking the truth that God was showing me and so now they're freaking super frustrated and their frustration has made them invest in so much death rituals they have done so many death spells that now Bokresha Batizi Ngohasi guess that they keep on sending to my camp. They are dizzy from their own spells. There are so many demons that they have sent in my direction that now they are high from the supply of their own intoxicants. They are inebriated from their own sorcery. And so what has been invested in their bones now is a depression that they've never felt before is a macabre they've never felt before is a sense of foreboding they have never felt before is a melancholy they have never felt before because you don't get to dabble in this much witchcraft and not be made as forlorn as despaired spirits that will spend eternity in hell you don't get to dabble with condemned spirits and not in and of yourself experience the despair of condemnation. So now they're more suicidal than me. They have cast so many spells on me that their demons have now depressed them. Basically the demons of suicide that are now tormenting me are tormenting them and the more tormented with suicide ideation they are the more they say i am juliet they are romeo and he's a pumangi one so basically the guy from america hitting his head like this pulling the trigger putting it in his mouth and then thinking about the Bar Garabo still alive over my dead body before I fulfill her prophecy. So he is staying alive despite an exquisite depression that is telling him die, die, die. The evil spirit of Saul that God sent him made him pursue David until Saul himself was dead. Do you understand what I'm saying? God 
essentially has made these men drink their own cool age so much he's made these women drink their own cool age so much that Bazo Kinabazi Bulale from the very same demons that they sent me they cannot stomach this level of magic practicing in one sitting essentially they're like the ten amount of people who overdose on witchcraft they're going to OD on sorcery but I have a spirit that protects me from the full working of dark magic so when there is a depression invested in my bones I overcome it by the spirit and I put to death the deeds of the body they have no such holy spirit they have no restraining power all they have is the dust of Satan in the atmosphere and at some point like the guy in America they will put a gun in their mouths taste the metal and pull the trigger he is not going to be able to resist killing himself indefinitely he has been holding a gun to his temple and then in his mouth and then pacing his room and then hitting his head and then putting it down and then going back to try and kill me again and then doing another love spell and then grabbing a gun the next day putting a bullet A1 in it and shooting and it missing him putting the gun down him putting it in, at his temple him looking at me with that gun while doing watching a YouTube video and threatening to shoot the screen he has been pacing with a loaded gun for months that he has not been able to unleash but eventually he's going to unleash it the Lord showed me a year and a half ago this guy finally swallowing a bullet and it's been a year and a half since and still to this day we're busy now and he is not the only one now there are more of them piling on me God one after the other after the other after the other seeing as they have overdosed on witchcraft the demons that they're trying to make me without thinking to just hang myself cause me fra are gonna take them rather the very gallows that Mordecai set up for that Haman sorry set up for Mordecai to hang at these men are gonna hang at them themselves Haman hung at the very gallows that he set apart for Mordecai the very suicide spells that these men keep sending me are going to turn around and do a u-turn and slap them but we polaya and as they kill themselves i will gain relief one after the other but i will never gain so much relief that i will be free from striving because this striving is something I'm going to endure until the rapture. But I will given, I will be given, sorry, respite. I will be given relief. With every new one that dies, I will be given relief. It's not every one of them that are going to die from suicide. But at the date of every one of their deaths, they will be so depressed that they could commit it. But some of them are going to die. Die because of drinking and driving and the reason why they will have drunk themselves in themselves to a stupor is because of listening to content like this being scared it's true knowing they're depressed and so will turn to self-medication they will turn to drugs they will turn to snuffing lines of cocaine they will turn to smoking marijuana and they will turn to drinking alcohol to try and suppress their suicide ideation and so in avoiding suicide by taking drugs and drinking alcohol will get so intoxicated from these substances that they will get into vehicles high and or drunk and kill themselves in a, in a car crash because they were too drunk to drive. They will be unable to have a single sober moment in the day. They will literally be high on the job from cocaine just to avoid killing themselves and in being so high 
will inevitably kill themselves by simply being unable to operate heavy machinery in the state but nonetheless doing it and so passing away from collateral damage of things like drinking and driving walking and drinking and walking drinking and talking riding a bicycle and driving and uh, sorry and, and drinking talking to people blaba raf essentially rudeness while drunk or while high and these people will retaliate by grabbing a gun and shooting you out of road rage punching you to death in a bar where it is that you are rude to somebody there too they're gonna get killed they're going by people they're going to get to die in accidents in an intoxicated stupor or they're going to make like the guy in america unable to resist the devil until the gun that he has been putting in his mouth and putting down putting in his mouth and putting down will finally go in his mouth and he will shoot they're going to send themselves to hell knowing that that's where they're going and all the way up until they get there they will not repent jacob i have loved it esau i have hated vessels of dishonor walking in iniquity that god has raised up and set them up, up for the day of my trouble I already told you about the married man that jumps off his balcony to his death in front of his wife with a bottle or with a glass of whiskey in his hands. I've been saying this over and over and over again. Labantu, they're dying because a cockroach gotta be killed. But in the run up to them dying, they will think that I'm dying. They will think I'm on my way out. They will keep on trying love spells, death spells, love spells, death spells, love spells. Drink yourself to a stupid or eradicate depression. Go to a club, a bar, a pub. Rudely speak to some dude chilling at the bar and he will bring out a knife and cut your throat. He'll go to prison, but you'll go to hell. That's literally what's coming like clockwork they're about to drop like dominoes and like i said in my other videos those among them that do not pass away they're only being kept alive for two reasons one to watch their children die their favorite kids are going to die and two for the lord to endure them through the tribulation they will take the mark of the beast end up with loathsome sores they will get scorched with great heat they will endure a darkness they will gnash their teeth bite their tongues in their mouths and only die at the very end of the tribulation where they're going to get eaten by birds that's what's coming and in the run-up to all that I gotta come here daily and remind myself that that's how this ends for everyone that insists that I'm gonna be single for the rest of my days or be with a little devil. I comfort myself with the recognition of the fact that I am safe no matter what and they are in danger no matter what. So whether or not the world, whether or not the world is presently upside down is irrelevant whether or not i'm innocent and unsung is irrelevant whether or not i'm always scared at all that which i'm being shown by the occult activities of this world is irrelevant whether or not my country is like the ancient civilization in the movie apocalypto is irrelevant whether or not people are trying to chop my head off and roll it down a steep staircase ululating at the moon is irrelevant because bottom line is divine intervention is going to set me free from this this open casket funeral that you're looking at on youtube is just an optical illusion what you must understand is that those who are with me are more numerous than those who are with you and there is no way this is going to end well for anyone that is an enemy of the cross anizolunga what you ought to be concerned about south africans is the fact that this here is something you have freaking taken in your stride you have accepted it this here is not something that you are wagging your head at in disbelief that you have allowed a woman to suffer like this this here is not my judgment but yours just the fact that you are complacent in a trance is the problem 
indaba yo guti guno munto shona yo pamguenu ena nina ndaba that's the issue that is the evidence of the fact that everything I am saying is true that is the evidence of the fact that we are in the last days this is the great apostasy men have fallen away they're lovers of themselves money boastful proud blasphemous disobedient to parents unthankful unholy abusers truth breakers having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God they are always learning, never coming to a knowledge of truth. You are incontinent. You are always sliding into the DMs of weak-willed women, seeking to burden them with sins and passions. And you, on that day, therefore, ought not be taken seriously because you are like Janus and Jambres. You cause people of God to fall away from the faith because you are like Hymenaeus and Philetus out here refuting the resurrection. You are a canker worm, a palmer worm, a locust, a, um, a bunny worm, whatever is a chewing, gnawing away maggot and your attempt is to steal that which God is going to restore to his people all the years that the locusts and the pama worm the the, 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 the the eating away worm the canker worm whatever has eaten God is going to restore in the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ he's going to give it all back to us but in the run up too we will have appeared done for we will have appeared ironed flat on the ground unable to come up for air steamrolled in the run up too it will have looked as if though ain't nobody coming for us in the run-up too, it will have looked as if though the wicked have prospered. Because that is just exactly what happens when the Lord is out trying to display his glory. He will plague your lands and lay them desolate, destitute like ancient Egypt. Only to set his people free. And for everybody to know therefore that he is the Lord. People will finally know that he is God, but not first before you look at your Egypt typology. running. When the world is desolate because of a shower of meteors having decimated your neighborhoods, having made decrepit green grass having been made brown. When the Lord has taken your world and laid it waste, and when the earth no more covers her slain, like it's written in Isaiah 26, literally the earth is no more going to cover her slain. Meaning that the dead of the world are going to be strewn, cadavers, stenches of corpses are going to be rising up your noses. Because you're going to be walking up and down communities, neighborhoods, with dead bodies everywhere, mortuaries overrun and hot because there's no electricity. So even they stink. There's not going to be funerals, burials, because there's going to be so many people dying all in one sitting. The horseman of the apocalypse that is on the pale horse is called Death, and Hades follows him, and they're given authority to kill a quarter of the human race. When two billion people are dying in one sitting, who in the world is Aja trying to put them in the ground? There's going to be too many of them. So Isaiah 26 gets fulfilled where the earth will no more cover her slain. The earth will no longer bury dead bodies. That is your judgment. And yet you think today that you can put me in the ground at West Park Cemetery because that is just how poignantly you have determined when I'm going to die and where I'm going to be buried. You are out here trying to put me in the earth at West Park Cemetery. Whereas y'all are not even going to be given the decency of being inside the ground so you don't stink up all of Emerentia, so you don't stink up all of Soweto as Avalon, so you don't stink up the whole of your neighborhood for simply being dead while letting maggots eat away at you and the stench of your putrefying gases in the body as you come up the nostrils of people. The earth will no more cover her slain and you think I'm in trouble. You think I'm in danger. You think a woman that is facing death and a burial in a proper cemetery in the ground where you're not going to stink up my corpse your noses up your noses you think i'm in danger when i'm facing a decent burial whereas all of y'all are going to be strewn on the street with people jumping over you maggots flies all over the show dogs carrions your carrions are going to be on the floor being consumed by hyena scavengers wildlife birds of prey that not of prey sorry but birds scavenger animals beasts like hyenas and um vultures eating away at your carry-ons literally the movie jumanji is going to be fulfilled in your lives where there will also be a stampede of wildlife in your inner cities right now they're chilling behind fences at the kruger national park right now they're staying largely in the wilderness because they tend to avoid human traffic 
our footsteps freak them out. But now they're going to stampede in your cities because God is going to send beasts and wildlife to literally have a field day with you. In your inner city, you are going to get killed by wildlife. The rider on the pale horse is going to kill you with wild beasts. So literally lions are going to come out from where they're chilling in the wilderness and they're going to populate suburbia and inner cities and have you for breakfast and you think I'm in trouble. You think I'm in trouble. That time is coming. There is no way it is not South Africa, do you understand? Because you are that ancient civilization in the movie Apocalypto. You are priding yourselves in the death of people. You are into freaking contact sports. You are right back to the days of Nero where you are watching Christians be mauled away by lions in the Colosseum. You are watching people in the Hunger Games, the cabin in the woods. You are watching people in the Squid Game literally as the elite who are out here fighting for their lives. You are watching people be in what it is the tenement of kill or be killed. You are watching ravenous souls out here kill each other for sport. I am going to survive so I'm going to take away your wealth that I might live. You are spectators at a barbarian Olympics. You are spectators at a barbarian show of wicked power and nothing in you is disquieted by the by the by the complacency of the observation of a person passing away in front of you you are literally at that place you have therefore foreshadowed the exquisite violence of moral turpitude described in second timothy 3 and matthew 24 where it is written that men will betray one another and they will hate one another and many false prophets will go out into the world and because of an increase in lawlessness the love of many will grow cold second timothy 3 speaks about how you have no natural affection anymore even men and imposters deceiving and being deceived waxing worse you think i'm in danger i am crying wolf and I am saying, look around, the world is over and you are spiteful in your reaction to me to a point of saying, you will be single for the rest of your life or you could be with me. They think these carry-ons, these dead bodies about to be eaten by vultures, that I'm the one here in danger. Hmm. Mankind, there is nothing new under the sun, okay? It is written in the Lord's word in the book of Ecclesiastes that there is nothing new under the sun. That if it's been done before, it will highly likely get done again. Even the Lord operates within that principle. How it is that he delivers his saints is predictably been the same all throughout history. He takes Lot out of Sodom. He takes Noah from the world that does not like him, that despises him. He will extract Noah, Job, and Daniel out of a crazy city because these people with their righteousness will escape with their own lives. But God will decimate that entire town. The Lord has had a thing about extracting saints from an ecosystem. So he's going to extract us this time around before he decimates the living daylights out of you. But another, another thing, however, that is not new under the sun is how the devil has just been deceiving you. How the devil has just made you be very, very crazy, like predictable and typical until you go to Hades. South Africa, you will not be the first uh, nation, the first people group to basically watch a person die. And you will also not be among the first people to systematically legalize wickedness witchcraft is legal in this country it's being practiced but lab by lackluster people are just killing and just like they're committing crimes that would be under normal circumstances illegal if they did them physically but because they're using witchcraft they're legalized systematic oppression is nothing new under the sun it's been happening for a minute but the kind of oppression that now presently is is, 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 is in existence appears to have been out, out long, long ago right nothing new under the sun the observation of of fighting unto death gladiators in the coliseum Nothing new under the sun. It's coming again and it's presently happening. I already made mention uh, of that. Similarly, do uh, contact sport unto death. Yeah, now they've only taken away the death component. It's going to come back again. And it presently, it, it appears, is also happening. Right? Um, yeah. The sacrificing of children to gods while a country has legalized this and apparently this is what needs to be done as a necessary form of worship to their gods or whatever nothing new under the sun there is a tribe in the old testament by the name or a people group a country called moab 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 m-o-a-b yeah the moabites 
the tribe or the people group that Ruth came from. Ruth was a Moabite, okay? The Moabites had a false god, a fallen angel, a principality chilling over their country called Kamosh. Go read that in the Bible. Kamosh was a demon god, of course, or rather let's call it a fallen angel god. And I mean, the devil absolutely adores blood, right? He adores to mimic that which is God's sacrifice. It's written in God's word that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. The devil therefore knows and understands that there is value in blood. There is life force in blood. Also, it is written in God's word that life is in the blood. Right? But there is no eternal life to be found in the blood of human beings, in the blood of animals, of insects, whatever. Even though there is life in that blood, right now I am alive because there is blood coursing through my veins. Once you exsanguinate me, I perish. So there is indeed life in the blood, but it is temporal, it is finite, it gets finished off. You can die. You can also get a blood disease that will ascertain that you can no longer live. Satan, however, cannot create a perfect sacrifice with blood, right? Even the blood of human beings. But he can give himself some kind of juice and energy with whatever blood is spilled from animals and people. So our God, in the, in the Old Testament, the Hebrews, he foreshadowed the shedding of the be all and end all of eternal blood sacrifice by causing his people to sacrifice animals. Animals. Animal blood was spilled for the atoning of the Israelites in the Old Testament. God has never done any human sacrifice but for Jesus. And there was a foreshadowing of this human sacrifice that was stayed, however, in the Old Testament in the story of Abraham and Isaac. And before Abraham could kill Isaac, the Lord said, stop, grab that animal and rather kill it. That'll be sufficient for now. But the Lord was basically foreshadowing that the only begotten son of a man will one day have to die for the sins of humanity. But you see, the human sacrifice that was done by God did not stay a human sacrifice. It got resurrected. His name is Jesus. So therefore, the devil can never really emulate Christianity. We are able to eat of his body and drink of his blood precisely because he lives on. And so through his blood and through his flesh, we can live on. But the devil tries to copy Satan. It tries to copy God. And so the same sort of kind of practices that we do in Christianity in the worship of the one true God, the devil does them, but in a very heinous capacity, in a very carnage capacity. Satan also knows that there is life in the blood and that without the shedding of blood, there is no what would be the ten amount of remission of sins or the awarding of life. So he has induced in humanity a practice of just shedding a whole chunk of blood for satanic practices. And in what you call more sober societies, you are to be slaughtering cows and sheep, goats and the like. You slaughter chickens. In the black community, chickens are a thing with ancestors. You basically shed the blood of animals. And then there's you guys in the occult out here slaughtering even unclean animals like cats, like anything that you can find on the street that you cut up for a satanic ritual, you're cutting it up, right? You, you are just slaughtering pigs. The Lord would never have allowed for the slaughtering of a pig because he considered it an unclean animal, but in the occult, don't nobody care insofar as it's bloodshed, right? Mm. So Satan first introduced humanity into the shedding of animal blood because there is life in any blood, be it animal or human. So he gives himself energy and power through the shedding of blood. He causes humanity first to sacrifice blood to him as an idol that he might be elevated as their god and then after he gets you nicely accustomed to shed shedding the blood of a cow or two he then is like i mean this is not good enough just like christ said did he not nobody can be saved by the blood of bulls and rams the blood of animals is not sufficient to atone for any human being that's what's written in god's word i believe in the book of hebrews right but I stand corrected. I actually could be Romans or I don't know what, like somewhere in the Bible. Basically, the blood of, of animals cannot atone for human sin. 
That was just a foreshadowing of a human sacrifice that was necessary. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. By his stripes we are healed. He became, he who had no sin, like I said that already, but he was tempted in every way and yet did not sin. The Lord is called a holy and an acceptable sacrifice. He is the lamb who was slain from before the foundations of the world. Christ was God, fully God and fully man. Because he was fully man, he was able to atone for the sins of man. And because he was fully God, he was therefore without sin. And so therefore his death would have been unjust if at all it did not substitute for the deadness of the human race. Therefore, the holy and perfect sacrifice was Christ. And because Christ is eternal, he was able to be resurrected because there is no finality to how many human beings he can atone for, including himself getting resurrected. He got resurrected because there is not a finality to God. There is no beginning to Jesus and there is no end. Meaning, therefore, that there aren't too many people that could ever enter into the fold of God that then make basically the atonement that he did at the cross reach its height. Like, they, 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 you, you can't have... We've reached now 50,000 people so we can't get more saints in. We've reached now 10 million people so we can't get more saints in. Why? Because God is eternal. There is no finite number of how many souls he can redeem with his blood because he is God eternal. Past and God eternal future. And his righteousness is therefore successfully imputed on all of us who embrace his name. Because without confession and repentance, there is no remission of such sins as these. You have to actually seek that forgiveness out. So given that there is no, no, no given that it's in, in infinite, his ability to atone, it's frankly a waste of that atonement when you don't embrace him. That's why it's written in God's word, who neglects so great a salvation? Because he can atone for every last sinner ever been born on the earth. And yet, humanity rejects him. And yet, strangely, the road that is narrow that leads to life, only few people find it. Yet, only a remnant gets saved, even of the elect Jews. It's always just a small number of people that embrace this great, eternal and infinite propitiation. Jesus was a human being and God at the same time. So, I mean, seeing as Satan can never find an equivalent to Christ, he then finds an equivalent in those made in his, in, in, in his image. He finds an equivalent in man, made in the image of God, who God breathed into and they became what? Living souls. So now there is life inside men. So Satan then basically mimics the crucifixion, the atonement, the resu not the, not the resurrection, well, even the resurrection, he mimics it by killing people because the resurrection is emulated or mimicked in the fact that literally there's more of us than where, where, where they came from. There's more of us where they came from. We can just pop new babies and kill them. So with every new cr person you kill, there's always a next door neighbor. There is always somebody's kid. There is always somebody's uncle and brother. There is always a new baby in the belly of a woman that can be aborted or miscarried. There is always a new human being to replace the one that died. That's his idea of the resurrection. An infinite supply of human souls to exsanguinate. So Satan gets all of y'all into human sacrifice to emulate what Jesus did at the cross and three days later upon being resurrected. And so therefore displaying that we too can be resurrected because he rose again. The devil does human sacrifices to copy Jesus, to copy God. And every, every civilization that he frequents that embrace him as God or fallen angels as God. Yeah. He gets them into human sacrifice. He gets civilizations that are wholeheartedly determined to worship idols, to kill people for a form of religion. It happens like clockwork. There is no human sacrifice in Judaism acceptable. And there is no human sacrifice acceptable in Christianity. And yet the amount of human sacrifice you find even in Islam through what they call jihad and also the amount of human sacrifice that you find in other ancient religions like Eastern mysticism, whatever you might find. The amount of human sacrifice in ancient Egypt 
the amount of human sacrifice and cults that tell themselves kill yourselves and find yourselves in like some kind of nirvana or in some kind of like paradise later is exorbitant every time the devil gets into people's heads he makes them kill people he makes them kill people and this ancient civilization called moab their god kamosh which is nothing but a fallen angel insisted that they sacrifice humans and you see the more pure this blood is the better because christ was who a man who knew no sin but then he became sin for us that we may become the righteousness of god in jesus christ so basically the more sinless the human being the better it is the reason why child sacrifice is so prevalent also in these societies they love abortions and miscarriages and they also adore the killing of infants like newborn babies so infanticide never mind that but also like toddlers preteens just children and kamosh insisted upon children going through the fire this god of moab insisted that the moabites in order for them to not be met with misfortune and to have riches and wealth and health they need to sacrifice their children make them go through the fire these practices were legal in these civilizations it would be what is called systematic oppression it would be the ten amount of a whole bunch of romans watching gladiators fight unto death in the Colosseum, barbarism being observed but because it's legal nobody is calling it out for what it is so here it is that we've got a systematic oppressive regime called the moabite kingdom out here killing kids putting them through the fire because that's what is needed in order to basically get the perfect atonement for the moabites issues and the Lord condemned these societies. He shunned them. He turned his face from them and admonished his people, the Hebrews, to never partake in the practices of the nations surrounding them. It's raining outside and you are not going to be okay. No, you're not going outside. I mean seriously like listen to the, that thunderstorm you are not going I'm not letting you go anyway whatever you can scratch over there until kingdom come I'm not letting you go yeah that's what under heaven it is that happened no 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 sorry whatever i can say they don't bore amona being all disquieted by what needs to have by, by by the, the by the weather and yet like i'm trying to lay all the wicked around my life like you're not going to get what you want anyway whatever so these these are moabites in this like cave mentality of a crazy like barbaric society but then god always admonished his people don't partake in the practices of these barbarians because it's not of me i don't approve it's literally that basic so i mean those of you who call yourselves christians and you're always latching onto bibles underneath your armpits and yet you do human sacrifice rituals or you put a person in a position to die you impoverish the living daylights out of them take away their career make sure they don't breathe they don't come up for air until Lomundu is so obviously at the precipice of suicide that she could die you're freaking moab you are moab you are putting your children through the fire you are sacrificing human beings so you can be okay you feel as if though to atone for your life's wacko general demeanor you gotta go and spill the blood of Garabo. You gotta go and, spl and spill that you gotta basically commit an abortion against your own body. You gotta go and, um, what is this? Commit abortions in people's bodies. Make sure that the sanctity of human life is thrown out the window. Nobody is doing anything sober and rational. And in this crazy groupthink, this tribal mentality that you are all incarcerated by, this tribal mentality that you are all incarcerated by 
is strangely not being recovered from like you're not healing you are not healing from this tribal mentality because when you look left everyone improves when you look right everyone improves and everybody that is essentially kind of cray cray that does not disprove of this behavior <clears throat> you feel safe because of them you feel ensconced and protected by the concerted malar malarkey of everybody you feel protected by the fact that on the left and on the right of you Wonko Muntu seems to be doing this thing and the sad and disquieting thing about groupthink is that the road is narrow that leads to life and few there be that find it essentially there is no safety in numbers so when you tribe along trudging through a forest with a bunch of gangsters just laying waste entire communities honey just because people are scared of you and they're timid and just because there are 20,000 of you versus a community of five people does not mean you're okay when you are a terrorist you are a terrorist you are a terrorist when you are a murderer you're a murderer you're a murderer when you're a thief you're a thief you're a thief and whether or not your country has legalized theft terror and murder is irrelevant bottom line is you have a responsibility to recognize that your systematic oppression in your land is evil just in the same way that in the days of slavery there are some white people that woke up and said this is wrong just in the same way that in the days of apartheid there were sober minds that recognized belonging to what is this benefited groups like white people they said apartheid is wrong so whether or not you are supported by the majority whether or not you belong to the camp of people that are protected by a systematically oppressive regime you are without excuse when you maintain that status quo because of the fact that there are people among you who get attacked by consciences and so therefore break away from babylon they break away from moab they break away from the apartheid sentiment and they say set the black people free set the indians free set the colors free because we can't freaking live in a country so segregationist if there was a white person at all with an attack of conscience in the days of apartheid you are without excuse to be benefited by an occult rich occult crazy country that has legalized crimes insofar as they're being done in the occult just because south africa is not outlawing your crazy does not mean you're okay you have a responsibility in your unique capacity we won to realize you live in moab and like ruth join naomi to be with naomi's people instead of continuing in a circus Ruth was a Moabite that broke away from Moab. You have to make like Ruth and leave Moab. Even though Moab has benefited you in crazy. Even if your country has left you to fester being a cockroach. You have an incentive to become a person already. And so loyal left and right with South Africa letting you do what you want. You've decimated the country's economy. But now you're being encouraged to be freaking normal because this is abnormal when you are just rolling the tokotaba to down steep staircases and then ululating at the sun and nobody can snap you out of it of course you belong in hell i'm your shanja you are part of a group think and you are crazily imaginative of the fact that there can't be any danger coming your way purely because so many people happen to agree that what you're doing is okay even though your consciences are speaking different volumes snap out of crap that nobody else is snapping out of that's what i'm getting at this human sacrifice frenzy in south africa thank you thank god in the absence of you guys repenting from it you are not going to be able to say to god I Marokota won't come to appear to agree and mina footy menga funuguba part of the grain of suffering people. I did not want to get abused because others were abused by by standing up against what is wrong. They started it. Abu Kara Abu Pink in Abokabe or by Kalile. And so because they started it in 1997, and now I'm gonna rock up in 2024 and just do the same thing just so I can have a better life. I have a sibling that joined the occult purely because everybody else did it like proper motosa lawyer kajeku because oh no apparently nobody gets a life if they don't that's what's going on so manje makhlanywa kangaka even though you know something is wrong 
what the heck are you doing maintaining in this? The devil has out you mimicked Christianity by sacrificing human beings. Even though the one human being that Christianity sacrificed arose again. You, however, are continuing in this fashion. You are uncultured and you are like Moab. You are like ancient Rome under Nero. You are like spectators over the Hunger Games. You are watching barbarism. And because everybody on the left and on the right of you as they pan, as you pan your head, appears to be content and complacent in it, now you're blooming under it. Just like in modern society, everybody has embraced boxing as a reasonable, feasible sport. Agbo no aguti lendo, it's evil. Ha utlot prapabatu for a career and then claim that Jesus Christ gave you victory. You do not hold your fist up against another man for sport. You only hold your fist up against another man in battle, in war. If they have declared war on you, if at all you must defend yourself and take up your armor, then only throw a punch, bugger. But you don't just throw a punch because a referee said, Brr! You don't just throw a punch because an audience is like, yeah, 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 yeah. Tabo, 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 tabo. Tabo, the timbre that you are in the ring with. Steal your town. Plunder your village, rape your women. Loot everything there and take it for himself and in so doing such a thing as that declare war on your town no no i just trained for boxing then why are you beating him up in jemahala to entertain a bunch of bloodthirsty people that are not prepared to admit that they're bloodthirsty because people don't pass away unless hamas has broken into the kibbutz and burned your babies in some ovens you do not have a right to throw a punch at anyone. You are not to partake in contact sports, humanity. You are barbaric in so doing. But you are desensitized to such things as these. You are desensitized. You are desensitized. I don't know how many people who have come to Christ, having been boxers historically, confessed that when they were doing boxing, they leaned on demons to give them superpower so they can beat people up. And so confess that boxing is just freaking evil. Wrestling is evil. Anybody that is a Christian that is a wrestler, a boxer, a contact sport, like if you are not doing kickboxing for fitness only. In other words, the thing that you're kicking is a bean bag, some little hanging thing on the sky. If you are not punching a wall, if you are not basically partaking in this contact sport without actually hitting anybody, it is evil. Capoeira, for instance, is a form of contact sports but nobody actually gets hurt when you throw a kick in capoeira the person is too duck you so you are so careful with swinging your leg to the other person that if at all they're not yet out the way you will literally hang in midair wait for them to duck and then only you go over so literally unless your contact sports is like that where it's actually innocuous and it's like a game of two children playing you are not to partake in it. If you are actually kicking people, if you are actually throwing punches, you on that day are sinning. You are sinning. You are sinning. And because of society's desensit desensitization against things like contact sports, it's easy for them to watch a person dying on the internet and do nothing. Because Garabo, there's no real blood coming out of your nose except I keep talking about death spells being practiced against me daily. You are watching a Hunger Games match, but it's okay. I'm gonna stay in this arena until you finally develop a, a, a sweet enough conviction that what you did was wrong, cause God left you behind. You will finally hearken to what I'm saying, but some of y'all are first gonna die. Some of y'all are first gonna lose children, and some of y'all are not even gonna repent, but you're gonna be made to endure the tribulation so that you can be clopped, clobbered, clobbered, and clapped by it, that you might get eaten by animals at the end. You are Moab. You are putting your children through the fire. You are partaking in a barbaric practice because it is systematically legalized in your country. Witchcraft is legal, but that doesn't mean you gotta do it. The Bible says, come out from her, my people, lest you should partake in her place. Just because Buloyi, Buligali, doesn't mean you must do it. 
it is satanic and it is a form of contact sports you are punching people that have not declared war on your land you are clobbering people that have not had it coming you are stealing and taking you are pillaging you are not recovering to yourself you are not retributing you are not restoring stolen wealth you are taking wealth that's not yours from people that have not had it coming you just do wealth transfers and then you impoverish people and leave them strewn on the floor like cadavers at an accident scene and you expect that God is not going to recalibrate those scales that he is not going to give back that which the palmer worm, the locust, the palmer worm and the canker worm have stolen you have eaten at people's everything and you hope to go to heaven there is a God that recalibrates scales he is just, he hates unequal scales and he is going to straighten that which is crooked and right now you are crooked you cannot watch all this malevolence this murder this homicidal genocidal intention on the part of south african occult practitioners being done against innocent souls and be safe in the sight of god you are either a mutineer against the body of christ and everyone that is a victim by omission or by commission you are either doing nothing at all to eradicate the circumstance or you are an active participant an active mutineer in the public an active participant in the mutiny mutiny against people's lives your barbarians you are animals and this is not going to end well for you so i will say this again whether or not you are of the imagination that you got me and you've pounced on me sufficiently enough to make me a 45 year old spinster never mind a 40 year old spinster that is going to die single absent of me embracing your devil worship is irrelevant it doesn't matter that you just so happen to think i'm in your clutch or your grasp or your control what's rather important is that i am not what's imperative here is to gauge rather the facts instead of the supposition instead of the recommendation instead of the presupposition instead of the assumption and instead of the presumption instead of that which is concocted imaginations arguments essentially yeah that i could very easily by the holy spirit demolish and every lofty pretension that exalts itself above the most high and hold into captivity every thought to the obedience of jesus christ it does not matter that you have presumed a thing all that matters is, is what is rather fact all that matters is that what is rather true what is rather reality what is voracious what is the information that we are running home with at present what is the truth that's all that matters not what is fabricated not not what is fantasy not what is a very believable phantom not that which is a dizzying spell that can make you believe a lie or a mirage it is not about the optical illusion but the reality and the reality and the reality is that jesus christ is lord the reality is that if he be for me can nobody be against me the reality is that i'm propitiated for so therefore i can never be in any danger what is rather true is that neither angel nor demon no life nor death no persecutions nothing at all in all of creation will be able to separate me from the love of god which is in christ jesus that is what is the only thing that matters not the optical illusion that the devil is giving me with his clamor and his noise and his gongy cantankerous music in an unsynchronized orchestra that's not what matters what matters is the still quiet voice of god that is the fact and this this beastly psychopath in america is gonna swallow a bullet for trying to undermine it because he is hyamania he's hymenaeus and philetus he is Janus and Jambres. He is trying to recover to himself a woman that does not belong to him. He is trying to infect me with HIV. He is trying to make me leave God so I can go and eat more bread. He is trying to cause me to abandon the pearl of great price that I have sold everything in order to acquire. He is trying to make me basically say, ain't nobody coming for me, so let me go and lay under a devil worshiper that's what's going on over here so all the best intimidating me into obscurity saying i'm gonna stay single for my days taking for granted the fact that i actually am kind of scared that that could be a thing
I am nervous that I will never marry and that this world is going to continue for another 20 years. I am scared that I'll never be able to use my eggs and that this earth is going to continue for another 50 years. I am out of my mind sorry for myself that I may very potentially be unemployed for the rest of my life while this earth continues for another 50 days. But that presupposition and that assumption and that presumption and that phantom, that fantasy, that idle thought is irrelevant because what's true is that I am going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air after the dead in Christ rise first. I am going to be caught up at the River Jordan and that even though I might be like Naman after walking these streets as a king but having leprosy I will be dunked in the River Jordan for seven years and I will come back looking like a baby and on that day you will embrace me as your queen. What matters are the facts and not the vain philosophies and the phantoms and the wild imaginations that God said, I must demolish. All that matters is the truth and not what makes me scared, not the thing that goes bump in the night. All that matters is Jesus. So I don't care that you can threaten me with obscurity for the rest of my days. It's all you got, an optical illusion. Like literally, I feel sorry for you occult practitioners. You literally rely on an optical freaking illusion. You need people to be deceived. You can never walk in a solid foundation like the truth. You will always be displaced by the raw the fact of what's actually going on. You will always be intimidated by the reality of what's actually going on. Because you live in Never Never Land. You live in some myopic dystopia where everything is just at your beck and call, at your mercy, bowing down to your spells. You hope that people will ignore the fact of what's actually going on in favor of the mind control experiment that you are participating in. That's all you got. And so I feel sorry for you because there will always be an opportunity to displace you at every given turn. You are not firm. You are not on a foundation that is resilient. You do not have what is called stability. You are always on shaky grounds. But it's written in God's word that the people of God are like Mount Zion, which will not be shaken, but endures forever. It is also written in that same psalm that the scepter of the wicked shall not remain on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous should turn aside to do their faces to do evil. So God knows how long I can stay in this and how much I can take. And I'm also unshakable because I'm in him. So while the voice of the devil might talk to me about my funeral service, the voice of God is talking to me about yours. While the voice of the devil might be talking to me about obscurity for life, the Lord is talking to me about the days you're in 24 hours a day that has made you live a present circumstance of obscurity, albeit being in severe denial. While you might be in my ear about how it is that ain't nobody coming for me, the Lord is al Jirada rapping on in my other ear saying, I am he and I will do that which I said I will do. I will accomplish it. I have a controversy with the nations and I'm going to pick it at my second coming. I do not care that you think no one is coming for me because the book of Revelation makes it clear in Revelation 20 that Jesus is. Or is it 19? The rider of the white horse rocking up with his multitude of saints to pick a final controversy with the nations of this world that thought they could bash their fist against God and his creation that has embraced him. That creation that has grown to see us revealed is one day going to ululate rightly as they ought to know. Not the S-U-N son, but the S-O-N son who is the man who became flesh and dwelt among us that nobody recognized but who became our redeemer. Creation groans to see the S-O-N revealed, to see the S-U, the S-O-N in us revealed. Creation groans to see saints embracing God revealed. Creation is saying, Jesus, we are looking at you. And yet they are looking at us. Creation hates that you worship it. And so it wants us who rightly worship him to be revealed. And that time is here. Akele Tabi, you are barbarians, South Africa. 
you have laid your whole country destitute and in the tribulation at the beginning of it you are going to be shunned and humiliated for doing this to me because all this work that I do and how powerful pregnant and extremely reaching I am would have rescued people from enduring the tribulation if you had let me go it's written in Luke 21 that always pray that you may be counted worthy to escape the things which are coming on the earth my message is so telling and so reaching that people would have repented and therefore escaped the things which are coming on the earth they would have been able to go in the chambers and essentially deal with God pouring out his indignation until it has passed on the earth people would have entered the ark because of my message but you blocked them from listening to me you blocked them People would have made like the church at Philadelphia. I am out here encouraging people to be righteous, to hold fast, despite attrition, despite pressure, despite pernition, despite whatever is coming at them. I am a voice of reason. I'm an, I'm an inspiration. So I would have produced Philadelphian saints out of my ministry. But you made them Sardian. You made them Laodicean. You kept them in a Pargamomian disposition. You kept them in a Thyatiran disposition. You kept them Ephesian. And then those among them that refused to capitulate, you made them like, the, what is this, Sardis? No, no. Not Sardis. What is this, um, this church that is persecuted? Smyrna. You created Smyrnians out of those that refused to capitulate to you. You got them persecuted for 10 days. And then those that hit themselves in the sleeve of God are like Philadelphia. But they're a negligible remnant. Will the Lord find faith on the earth when he returns? It's written in God's word. You have made it such that those who Christ is coming for are an embarrassing remnant. Remnant. You have kept people in a grain of Smyrna, Laodicea, not Smyrna, sorry, Thyatira, Laodicea, Sardis, Pergamum, and Ephesus. You have, you have made sure that people who could have been Philadelphian just can't quite get to that place because you so afflict people by attrition or by Tosa, you scare people so much, Philetus and Hymenaeus, that they abandon the resurrection. The dead in Christ rise first. Those who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. You tell people that ain't coming. You make them abandon faith. And those that are trying to encourage them with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. You have buried them. You have made them eat meager portions of bread and water like Micaiah. Top of that, you are insisting that in and of themselves they be La Laodicean. Lukewarm. Neither hot nor cold. And because they're lukewarm, God is going to spit them out of his mouth. You are trying to make me eat food sacrificed to idols, partake in sexual immorality like I am Thyatira or Pergamum. You are doing everything in your power to make me commit Balaam's error. And it's going to fail. But my survival, my striving, and my embracing of the cross in spite of everything that is going on would have encouraged people. So woe to you that kept people in a grain of sin because you would not let them listen to believers. Woe to you like fantastically perverted men who are thinking about nothing but having sex with a woman with this kind of message. Woe to you, filthy American man sitting on the chest of a Christian telling us who in the world are you you don't even know me from a bar soap and yet you think I'm your wife woe to everybody sitting on my chest out of nothing but flat lining coding absolutely dying jealousy over a woman's intelligence and beauty when the world is literally ending woe to you for being so freaking shallow enough to disregard never mind your own redemption but the potential redemption of everyone that could have listened to me whoa the world is ending don't say i didn't warn you i'm signing out in christ's name crank peace